Yo, what's good YouTube? This is Jake from TNJ. And a lot to get into in this episode. You guys do not want to miss any of this. So starting off, that week 14 matchup, we got the win versus West Virginia. But look at the rest of the conference. Oklahoma straight smoked Oklahoma State. It wasn't even close. 45 to 17. But look at this. Texas Tech ends up beating Texas. And you know what? That propels them to go to the conference championship. So Texas, a team that they were ranked number 12 at the time, they get upset. So now they lose their spot in the conference championship. So now we move on to the conference championship week and Oklahoma beats Texas Tech. 30 to 20 is actually a better game than what I was probably expecting. Oklahoma, you would think they would have blown Texas Tech out, especially since Texas was the superior team attribute-wise, but it ended up being a good game. But looking at the rest of the NCAA, so let's just check this out. We just look at the Pac-12, and there's a reason I'm looking at the Pac-12. So you look at what happens here. So looking at Week 14, so uh, USC ends up blowing out UCLA, but look at this. Stanford, who was undefeated at this time, ends up losing to Notre Dame, 49-16. to Remember, they were number two in the nation. Remember, they're 99 overall, everything, and they end up getting just straight destroyed by Notre Dame. So now going off to the conference championship, they lose in overtime to USC. Overtime. So you know what that sets up? That sets up a Marquette, Stanford, Alamo Bowl so we end up playing the team that was number two in the nation the whole year and we end up playing them they are 99 overall everything and that is nothing to I mean just turn your nose at because this is going to be another tough game remember last time we played 99 overall we beat Oklahoma but Texas straight blew us out we are kind of a different team but we do have some changes going into this game uh, especially with Anthony Jetter. He's taking over for Josh Dunbar. I'm moving Dunbar to the slot because I don't know how... He must have just had a really big year last year, and maybe it's just the sophomore slump he's having, but he definitely had a down year. But looking at the Heisman race, look at this. At the, after that big game that Alex Brown had to end the season, he ends up finishing second in the Heisman. And you know what's funny? He still has... Uh, lower amount of yards than last season and what's funny is that he missed the last two games last season so it's amazing to think that he finishes second in the Heisman this year but last year he had more yards more touchdowns a higher average yards per carry more yards after contact had a longer run and somehow he didn't even finish on the list last year so that is such a surprise he finished his second on the Heisman list and maybe next year we're going to try to get that 2k we'll, we'll have to see we got to get these linemen recruits so looking at the All-Americans let's just look at this so Alex Brown's a first team All-American Barnett ends up winning the Heisman so he's first team All-American let's just look to see what his stats were so it looks like he threw 34 touchdowns 3,000 3,300 yards passing uh, only three interceptions. Man, that was a really good season by him. Uh, I don't know what they finished with with the record. We can check that out. But Alex Brown finishes the All-American. Let's just keep going on the line. See if we have any more All-Americans. So Lewis Parker finishes as an All-American his senior season. Remember, he transferred from Juco. Hopefully, he gets drafted because I need to get some uh, the pro potential uh, grade up for my school. So Vince Cohen ends up getting All-American. And Paul Miller another transfer ends up getting all-american and remember he had a big season because he had five sacks from the safety position that's actually a lot uh four pass deflections one forced fumble what a nice year he had and then chad ball wins it for returners so any second teamers let's just see if we got any second teamers S sam darnold actually dropped he's second team quarterback last year was first team uh no no second teamers let's see if we have any freshmen so uh jamel cooley no surprise there i mean it just he just has a chemistry with Ashton Cohen. Now hopefully I can pick it up with whoever's gonna be the starter next year. He had six touchdowns, about 800 yards. Uh, so Todd Williams, Big Todd Williams, gets freshman All-American with eight sacks, and he had a he has a sack streak going as well. Hunter Gregg's eight sacks as well. So two freshmen, eight sacks. They didn't do too bad this year. I think they did pretty good. Ron Sands uh, actually has a pretty good year, 57 tackles. 
four sacks. So, I mean, he had a pretty good year as well. Uh, and then John Waters, he gets freshman All-American as well. Four interceptions with that big two interception game. Probably propelled him to that spot. So, uh, let's just go through all the awards as well uh, before hopping into this matchup uh, versus... Uh, I can't even think of the name. Stanford. So here we go. Alex Brown wins the Walter Camp for the best uh, running back. Um, actually, that's the best. It's just the best athlete on offense, pretty much. So it looks like he uh, wins that. The Bednarik, Vince Cohen, and Lewis Parker lead that. Uh, led by Vince Cohen, he takes home the award. The Nagurski. I mean, look at this, man. How is he winning this over a bunch of linemen? And a bunch of linebackers. He's winning the Nagurski, so he wins that award. Uh, O'Brien goes home with the Heisman Trophy winner. Walker, the Dope Walker Award. Alex Brown gets the best running back. Uh, keep going down the line here. Uh, let's see if any of our other players won any awards. So, Lewis Parker wins the best linebacker. I think that's no surprise. He had seven sacks in the middle linebacker position. Pretty good. Vince Cohen wins the Throp Award. No surprise there as well. The Groza. I don't know why. Adam Davis can just never win this award. I don't know what it is. He can just never win it. He hasn't missed a field goal in his career. 51 out of 51 extra points. 17 for 17 on field goals. I don't know. I, he hasn't missed one field goal yet. Best returner, Chad Ball. So, uh, I, we did win coach of the year. I th man, I, I don't know. It seems like if you have a bad team and you win, I think you should be at least eligible to win the coach of the year. I don't know. Let's look at the rest of the bowl game. So uh, if we're going down the line, let's go to the main ones. So it looks like the national championship. Whoa, Notre Dame actually propels themselves after beating Stanford to the national championship. So they're number two in the country. So we did actually ruin Oklahoma's season by they could have probably been in the national championship. They probably would have been because they would have been undefeated. They would have beat us. But Alabama is there again. I mean, they are just straight dominating. They won the national championship last year, I believe. I mean, they're on their way once again. Um, this is insane. I mean, they keep winning it. They're number one every single year. I mean, I guess it's just like real life. So the Cotton Bowl, Texas goes to the Cotton Bowl. The Orange Bowl, look at this. Duke. <laughs> Duke football is in the Orange Bowl. I mean, that is just insane. They're playing Georgia. Oklahoma plays UCF. So I want mm, that's an interesting game because UCF is actually turning things around in real life. They're number nine rush defense, rush offense in this game. The Fiesta Bowl, Florida State and Boise State. That's that's a pretty good matchup as well. Ohio State, USC in the Rose Bowl. Ooh, I mean, that's gonna that's a pretty good game. Look at Wisconsin. I mean, they're in the Outback Bowl. They're playing LSU. Um, somebody who they actually played in real life uh, a couple years ago when they had Leonard Fournette. They got absolutely torched by Leonard Fournette. But looking at the rest of these games, I mean, I mean the big names are probably in the big bowls, but no real surprise here. What does uh, Texas Tech end up doing? They end up playing Maryland. So that's a, I mean, that's an okay matchup. So looking at the end of the year stats, so passing leaders, Cohen, I mean, he's our leader, but he was hurt for most of the season, probably for half of the season. So he finished with 1,500 yards passing. <laughs> I just can't wait till I get a quarterback who can stay healthy the whole season. I just haven't had that yet. But hopefully one of these freshmen or Albert Vick, uh, the redshirt freshman next year, can stay healthy. We'll see. So rushing leaders, Alex Brown finishes ninth in the country in rushing. Look at Herbert up there. Remember he had that monster game versus us. He finishes leading the na nation in rushing. Going over to receiving, it looks like Jamel Cooley actually finished in probably the top half of the NCAA. He, he's 77, but I mean there's way more receivers than double that. So... I mean, he had a good season. No 1,000-yard receiver yet, but we're going to get there. Don't worry. Maybe Jamel Cooley will have that 1,000-yard season next season. But, I mean, obviously the uh, subtraction of Cohen for most of the season definitely hurt that. So tackling leaders, <laughs> we straight dominated. Vince Cohen, 100 tackles. Once again, back-to-back -back 100 tackle seasons. Lewis Parker, 76. Paul Miller, 57. And Ron Sands, 57. So leading the way in sacks, 10th in the nation. Todd Williams with eight sacks, and I'm surprised that there's not more guys with more sacks than NCAA. Only ten and a half led the NCAA, so this was definitely a year where there wasn't plenty, there wasn't a lot of sacks. So in the, in the interception, looks like Brown from Nevada had eight picks on the year. Vince Cohen had four, so almost close to the leader. So let's look at our look at our team stats. So doing some quarterback evaluation here, where Bradbury is probably going to get lost on the depth chart next year. 
Technically, he had a decent season, eight touchdowns, eight interceptions, but I wouldn't put much stock into that because look at his ratings. I mean, his ratings are just horrible for playing the way he did, 79 throw power, 70 accuracy, playing the way he did, he actually had a good season and if he would have stayed healthy, maybe he would have been starting the last couple games because he was doing okay. Probably not because Ashton Cohen is the superior talent for sure. Going at the running back position, uh, I thought that Jimmy Ward would actually be closer to about 700 yards rushing. I didn't think he would get 1,000 on the season. But Alex Brown actually is on pace to have more yards than last season. Uh, he has 14-18 at this point, only 100 yards shy of last year. But remember, last year he did miss the last two games. So really, he's taking a step back statistically, but still having a pretty good year. I mean, he won all these awards. I mean, <laughs> no disputing that. But Jimmy Ward had 405 yards rushing, and that's pretty good. I mean, because if you look at his average yards per carry, 4.6 is it too bad i mean that's not bad at all uh, 11 rush town rushing touchdowns he actually got in a lot and this is where it matters right here yards after first hit he had 91 which is pretty good he didn't have any rushes over 20 yards a little bit concerning there but um i don't know how much this stat broken tackles and rushing tack rushing fumbles or rushing actually just breaking tackles because i don't know how they even come up with that number because he definitely had a lot of broken tackles so receiving wise he had 10 receptions 109 yards let's actually look to see what alex brown had receiving so look at him so he had 33 receptions 288 yards but he had double the touchdowns this year than last year which means we're getting him in positions where he can score which is a pretty good thing because look at his average yards after catch goes up a whole yard and a half just about so um that's pretty good so let's look at our receiving leader so um if you look at this i mean kevin oliver definitely improved over last season and i don't mean improved as in yardage i'm talking about efficiency so he had 51 receptions over 52 last year he's definitely gonna surpass that but if you look at this man he's got some pretty good efficient numbers because his touchdowns went up but showing that we had another weapon on the outside Jamel Cooley def definitely took away a lot from him but he was still just as productive as last season so I like the season that he had the yardage definitely went down because Jamel Cooley took some yards from him but that was expected when you're getting a better more dynamic receiver on the outside I mean he's gonna take up some of his yards and some of his touchdowns so he has a good season Ben Miller remember he got hurt so his season was kind of cut short but he was kind of on pace to match his numbers last season but uh you never know Alex Brown actually is fourth on the team in receiving yards which is kind of surprising as a running back because you know we have some pretty good receivers Eddie McCray was on the other side he had an okay season definitely took a step back um I didn't need to use him as much because Jamel Cooley definitely uh took some of the balls away from him and that was kind of expected so he kind of had a down season uh then Herman Rogers kind of lost his job a little bit because he went to the fourth uh spot on our depth chart so he can finish here with 20 receptions uh no tds though no tds which is surprising he's had a lot of clutch catches in the in the slot and christopher rubri gets his first playing action this year he does decent decent and he gets to 20 receptions 230 yards which is pretty good um jimmy ward gets 100 yards receiving chad ball takes a step back but he still gets two touchdowns receiving so let's look at defense really quick so if we look at actually you know what, let's look at our offensive line i want to see how many sacks we've given up at each position so it looks like jamal larson at the right tackle position given has given up the most sacks this year so eight sacks i mean that is far too many and that's why i'm hoping i get rafael wheeler in recruiting because man eight sacks is a lot to give up because look at the rest of the guys even buck kilgore only gave up two sacks and look at his pass blocking rate and it's only 68 and he gave up two sacks so larson let's look at his pass blocking rate rating so it looks like he gave up eight sacks with 74 so we definitely got to improve at the tackle position uh kenneth jackson the rest of these guys only gave up two sacks so it's not bad even bo casey who i was actually concerned about at left tackle he only gives up two sacks so definitely somebody that i'm gonna be looking to protect is that right tackle position because jamal larson just isn't getting it done and he's giving up far too many sacks so looking at the defensive side of the ball Vince Cohen leads the team in tackles. We are looking at tackles, but let's look at some deeper statistics here. So let's look at sacks. So I don't, I didn't expect 
Todd Williams to get this many sacks. He's got eight sacks on the year. Definitely something that's surprising. Hunter Gregg's eight sacks. Lewis Parker, seven sacks. Not surprising there, but Paul Miller. I mean, coming up from the same position, getting five sacks, that's a lot of sacks. And what I'm looking for is assisted tackles. Who's there on every single play? So Paul Miller is there on a lot of plays. I like that he has some assisted tackles here. I don't know how they calculate this, but... I mean, it seems like the animations and stuff don't really do this stat justice, but who's there on every single tackle? So tackles for losses, Vince Cohen's always there. Hunter Greggs has a lot of tackles for losses, and you would think that Todd Williams is being as big as he is, being more of a run stopper, he would have more tackles for losses, but Greggs actually has more. So that's a good sign for Hunter Greggs going forward that he's actually doing some damage in the run defense. Uh, Paul Miller, 11 tackle for losses he's there for his speed i mean that speed is just unstoppable 96 speed 95 acceleration larue wiley is actually a guy that i think took a step back and I, th I think his stats are really telling here. He's had three sacks, but he was in the same position as Ali Christian last year. Ali Christian had double-digit sacks last year, and putting LaRue Wiley in that same position, he only comes up with three. So that's kind of concerning for me. I think he's on the chopping block, not meaning getting cut, but losing his spot next year because I didn't like the production I got out of him. Ron Sands actually had a pretty good year at that second middle linebacker spot. I, I was kind of low on him early this season. I didn't see him much in tackles but towards the end of the season he was doing work trust me four sacks nine tackle for losses 57 tackles on the year but i mean one of the the unsung hero of this defense definitely todd williams 14 tackles only that's kind of surprising but the funny thing is, is that all those tackles were crucial look at this nine of his 14 tackles were for loss eight sacks and he's supposed to be a run defender because if you look at his stats here he's got 82 power root moves only 73 finesse moves so he's not really a pass rusher but he still got after it and i liked what i saw from him and he's only 69 overall so i mean he's got a lot of room to improve hopefully that offseason training does him well dylan mack is a guy that you know he had a decent season 25 tackles four sacks eight tackle for losses I think he actually had a better season than LaRue Wiley, and next year, I'm thinking about moving him over to the left outside linebacker, but I'll have to see because he's got 80 block share, which I like, 82 speed, so maybe he'll get after a little bit better because look at his 76 power moves and 73 finesse moves, but I liked what he did on the right side of the defense. I liked what he did on the outside backer position, but some guys that to look out for next season, I mean, Lursh was that transfer uh, middle linebacker. He did okay. I mean, when he got in the game, he did pretty okay, but he was definitely a guy that probably could have used some more clocks, some more playing time. Maybe he could have made more plays, maybe in LaRue Wiley's spot, and on the, on the defensive tackle side, didn't really have a big season from any of my D tackles. That's including Chris Thomas, who is the senior. He did transfer. And then I don't even see... Let's let's keep going down the list. So I don't even see any other D tackles on here. Do they even have any tackles on this season? I mean, what happened? I think he is honestly the only D tackle with the tackle this season. That's kind of crazy because Baker was also there. I don't know what happened to him. But uh, Javon Pennington is a guy that lost his spot as well. He, comes with, <laughs> he gets one sack on the year. So definitely uh area to improve is i mean even to replace the middle linebacker position lewis parker and then that left outside linebacker position larue wiley i just didn't like what i saw from him this season and then josh dunbar i don't know what happened to him on the outside but he definitely took some uh steps back because he finishes with only one interception on the year when he led our team he was second on our team in interceptions last year i think he had four interceptions last year i could be wrong but he definitely had more than one. He only has one this year. Anthony Jetter comes in one half a game and he gets his first interception. So definitely something that to look out for, that left cornerback position. I don't know what I'm going to do. Jetter's playing pretty good there. He's going to start the bowl game there. But I don't know because we didn't produce a lot of turnovers. Between John Waters and Vince Cohen, if you take out those two, I mean, that's only three interceptions by anybody else. So definitely a position uh, thing that we're going to have to improve on is causing turnovers even sacks or forced fumbles we didn't have like any i mean let's look at forced fumbles 
let's see we had so it looks like we did have quite a few let's see fumble recoveries though how many turnovers are we actually producing so it looks like only four fumble recoveries so we actually forced about let's see two three four five six seven fumbles but only came away with four of them so maybe that's something that we have to prove on too maybe get a heavy hitter we'll see red johnson's got speed so maybe he's gonna be uh coming in producing right away but that's gonna do it for this episode man i wanted to just go over the season look at the season in a vacuum see how we did so hit subscribe hit that like button next week going up against stanford so you don't want to miss that one bowl season is finally here so let's get it let's go